Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about everything you need to know about the current ratio. My name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified accountant from the UK and on my channel I help out accounting students pass their upcoming examinations and I dedicate all my videos to my lovely subscribers. And today is no different as you can see in the middle because all the ratio questions and videos are dedicated to Anorak. So if you've got any questions yourself, be sure to leave me a comment below and subscribe so you get access to all my free materials. If you've got any questions yourself, feel free to leave them down here. But in today's class, what we're going to be talking about and going through is the actual liquidity itself. What actually is it? Current assets, current liabilities that factor into the actual current ratio. The current ratio formula itself with a working example. So you can apply it to whatever question you may have in front of you now. Analyzing your actual answer. So in other words, take the question you've got in front of you, apply what's in this lecture, and it's definitely going to help you out to get those marks. And then finally, how does the current ratio apply in the real world? Because it's all well known, the concepts, but you've got to apply them. That is the key thing. So first of all, we've actually got to say to ourselves, well, what is liquidity? Well, there's your definition on the screen. The ability of an organization to generate cash to pay its short-term liabilities as they fall due. And this is because liquidity and the current ratio is a short-term indicator. You have long-term liquidity and debt such as loans where you might actually have fixed and certain amounts. Whereas with liquidity and the current ratio, we really need to be managing and looking after our short-term liabilities that could fluctuate in the actual amounts. This is where if companies can't pay their short-term creditors, they could fall into liquidation. And this could be one of the areas such as stock being tied up, not getting paid by our trade receivables, not enough cash in the business. Because if you actually have a poor cash flow cycle management, that is one of the ways that a business could lead to bankruptcy. But just a final key thing to get down there in your notes, that the most liquid asset on a company's balance sheet is its actual cash and other reserves on there. So make sure you get that down. Usually we'll have it in the in the states as cash and cash equivalents, just to be uh, just to be sure on that. So we did touch on the actual current assets and current liabilities, but what actually are they? Well, current assets, as you can see on the screen now, are an item that is expected to be used by a business within a year. Make sure you get that down as a keynote today. That current refers to within a year or less than a year. Examples of current assets found within the statement of financial position, the balance sheet itself, that will need to be applying in the current ratio today are the cash, uh, trade receivables, inventory, and we could have other examples on top of that. Coming on to current liabilities now though, a company's short-term obligations that are due within a year, or in other words, what we actually have to make payments for that refer to less than a year on there. And these could be examples of trade payables, so these could be your actual creditors, also, just to touch on before where we saw trade receivables, another word for that is also known as your debtors. We could also have, coming back to current liabilities, short-term loans and bank overdrafts. All of these items within current assets and current liabilities are found within the balance sheets, and these are absolutely paramount and fundamental to how a business operates on a day-to-day -day basis. So whichever question you're actually looking at yourself now within your work, or if you're actually having to maybe assess and apply, try to picture a business that you feel comfortable with. So lots of the videos I talk about on the channel involve car manufacturing, and it makes me able to actually apply the concepts a lot more easily and to communicate that with the market. Both of these aspects we are going to see within the actual current ratio formula, so make sure you've got that down for your notes. As I was reiterating to, we now actually have the actual formula here. So key things to get down, this is also going to be linked into another video on the actual acid test ratio. So we'll come on to that in another lecture. But the actual answer that you're going to come to at the end of your calculations is going to be on a ratio basis. Or in other words, as you can see in the brackets on the screen, an answer on the basis to one. And what that means is from your actual answer, it's saying what pounds worth have we got of current assets and comparing that to one pounds worth of current liabilities. This will become a lot clearer as we get into an actual working example of this, but it actually represents the sort of number of times that we can actually cover those current liabilities. And once we get to actually apply it with some numbers, you'll start to see the picture unfolding. 
a healthy ratio or a healthy balance that is sort of a, a nice benchmark that you look for within your answer, obviously depending on the industry, is about 1.5 to 1 ratio on there. And as I reiterated too, the acid test ratio, also known as the quick ratio, involves this actual formula, but would deduct inventory. I've done other videos actually explaining the difference between the two, but for this one, I'm gonna just focus on the current ratio itself. Now, coming on to an actual working example that we can walk and talk it through now, and you can apply the current ratio to your working papers that you have at home, whichever question you're doing. So there's the formula as you can see on the screen, taking our current assets, dividing by our current liabilities, and we actually have a balance sheet or also known as a statement of financial position. As you can see on there, we've got the total assets equal to 300, and that's equal to the total equity and liabilities, also equal to 300. The balance sheet balances because of the accounting equation, that all the assets are equal to the equity plus the liabilities. But as we run through the actual question now, let's start to actually pick out the current assets and the current liabilities. So we've got the 50 plus the 10 plus the 40, and it's really key you actually show all your workings, applying the formulas and writing them down as well. So that gives us an answer of two, and this is where we actually interpret the current ratio as a two to one basis on there. Or in other words, we have two pounds worth of current assets for every one pounds worth of current liabilities on here. So we actually, we're looking for an ideal current ratio of 1.5 1 to 1, as we touched on earlier. So that would imply £1.50 worth of current assets to £1 worth of current liabilities. But now what you have to say to yourself is, well, what if we have an answer, say, 2 to 1, like we had in our working example, which will be a higher current ratio? Or what if we had an answer lower of than 1.5 to 1? Well, this is where you've got to say, if you have an answer in your workings to say, well, is it four to one, for example, so four pounds of current assets for one pound of current liabilities. Well, this could be implied that we actually have too much cash tied up within our current assets. So we have too many current assets than we actually need. But the flip side to this could be that we might actually have some unsellable stock, for example, or potentially our trade receivables amounts are getting larger and larger. How likely are they going to pay? So it's really key you actually look at the specific areas within the balance sheet we touched on earlier. The flip side of that is we could actually have a lower current ratio, so below a 1.5 to 1 basis. So for example here, 1 to 1, 1 pound of current liabilities to 1 pounds worth of current assets. And there's a risk here and a key word coming up or key phrase of working capital that we won't have enough to pay the day-to-day -day expenses to keep the business running. And this in turn could lead to down the, down the road liquidity risk and then finally potential bankruptcy of the firm that if we can't meet our short-term obligations then the business may go into liquidation having to sell off some of its assets. But this is really key that now you actually have seen the current ratio, you've applied some figures, you can take it to your own uh, examples, but we've got to put some real world application to this now. So remember that not every business operates in the same way and you should put the current ratio based on the question you have or the scenario you're given in an exam and consider all the individual factors within the balance sheet that affect it. So a couple of examples on here involve the supermarket industry that they actually work on cash reserves to buy bulk purchases on there or they actually may have small overdrafts if, if opportunities arise to actually buy certain products on there. The flip side of this could be a lawyer's firm for example so having high trade receivables are to be expected because of their line of work that cases could take years, months, whatever it may be. But in comparing to a, an actual supermarket Lawyers don't have particularly much inventory on their actual balance sheet, so that's another thing to consider when you're interpreting the ratio based on the type of business. Finally, an actual car manufacturer. So trade payable agreements to actually suit the processes, so it could be we might have to agree to a 30-day period or a 60-day period, but there actually could be cash benefits from research and development here, so that could pump in cash 
to the actual business because of the line of work that we're actually in. So we might have high cash expenses that again, we may get an actual cash boost from the business itself or from the government, but it's just to give you a bit of a flavor for other aspects that you should consider when looking at the current ratio, going back to the statement of financial position and saying, for the company I've got here, what are all the current assets? What are all the current liabilities? And then where do we go from there after saying which one looks like a little outlier or which one is, is skewing my figures in my results from my calculations on there. So that takes us nicely through absolutely everything that you need to know for your upcoming examination all about the current ratio. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a massive like and thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other videos. Click on one of the videos on the screen, they're highly recommended and could be that last difference to pass your next exam. But as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.